Hello there, Blade fans. This old sword back with you. And I've uh, had a bit of a hiatus uh, putting up a video here and there while I was away on vacation. Well, I returned today and realized uh, <clears throat> I hadn't made this video yet, but I put some stills out there on Instagram. So um, <clears throat> I want to get working on this one. This is about the Bally Song knife. It was going to originally be about this Boker large belly song that's all they call it large G10 belly song we'll get to that in a moment then I realized well <clears throat> after having no belly songs for many years and then many years ago having a good number of them particularly Benchmade Customs and this goes back we're talking to the early 80s when the Bally song <coughs> excuse me became uh, a big deal in um, printed media and amongst martial artists uh, along about the same time as the Americanized Tonto became very popular from Cold Steel so interesting early 80s phenomena that carried on for quite some time so um, the thing I want to say about Bally songs is that uh, they originated, as far as we know, in the Philippines. There may be some other three-section knives from other cultures. I'm not certain. <clears throat> but um, the name itself means broken horn knife, I understand, as I've been told. <laughs> and being a uh, pretty much lifelong martial artist and having practiced the Filipino martial arts, for uh, quite a number of years, I took a liking to the ballet songs. And these newer ballet songs are pretty much like the older ones, but uh, the older original ballet songs were folded brass and copper. Uh, they would use um, GI Jeep Springs back in uh, World War II and reforge those into blades. Later on, use ball bearing steels and so forth. And I don't, unfortunately, have any examples of uh, authentic indigenous ballet songs. So these are the westernized versions of them. Same knife, but made of modern materials and uh, a little bit of CNC and engineering going into these. Um, so as I said, this was uh, next to the Lucha, which I'll show you in a minute. This was the first one that I had uh, picked up and I uh, really love the action on it. So for you Bally Song guys out there that want about a $90 knife, $85, $90 knife, this is the large Boker G10 Bally Song. So uh, G10 scales, they're nicely rounded over and uh, they're skeletonized for weight relieving. Um, far as I know, these are on bearings. If they're not on bearings, they're on washers and they are equally smooth. The Lucha, the larger knife, is on bearings. And um, this just, I can do all of my uh, openings and closings with this that I would normally do. <clears throat> the way I was taught is not to do aerial, aerial acrobatics with the knives. Um, as uh, many teenagers learned as kind of a fidget toy. And by the way, speaking of fidgety knives, uh, for those that don't really care for ballet songs, uh, it's got to be the most fidgety knife there is. Um, far beyond any flipper <laughs> or thumb stud opener or what have you because you can keep it in constant motion and there are dozens of ways to open and close it there are dozens of ways to change hands you have to understand which is the safe handle and which is the so-called bite handle so the handle you want to have your hand on is the one usually without the latch but that's not always the case there is the Manila and the Batangas Ballet Song. The Batangas Ballet Song 
has no latch on the safe side. The latch is on the so-called bite side. So what we talk about there is if you're holding this handle and flipping it back against your fingers, you're going to be hurting. And uh, buy many boxes of Band-Aids, as actually a lot of ballet song practitioners do. But uh, <coughs> holding on to the latchless handle on the Batangus is going to be the safe handle. The Manila is going to be the other handle. A new addition to ballet songs recently as well is the pocket clip. The old Benchmade ballet songs are really ballet song ballet songs. Ballet song company preceded Benchmade and preceded Pacific Cutlery. So we're talking about the company being back in uh, Burbank, California in the late 70s and uh, early 80s before they changed over to Pacific Cutlery and started making a lot of other stuff. Jody Sampson was grinding the blades by hand. Um, they were going for about 200 to 300 or so a piece. They were all one billet. Nowadays, you buy that billet ballet song from the Benchmade company, and they're charging five, five fifty. They were all billet ballet songs back then. They were all machined out of a solid bar of stainless at the time. Not titanium, but stainless. Okay. That's uh, a lot of reverie there, and I want to get into it. I like this version of the Boker better than a recent acquisition called the Tactical. The Tactical is ever so slightly longer in the blade and has a unusual multifaceted grind to it, I think, just to make it interesting. They did give you a nice cutout here so that you're not whacking your fingers, hopefully, on that piece of the spine. I guess we could call it a harpoon style. And notice that it has no ears. So the guard on the ballet song we refer to as the ears right there. So you'll see the difference between those two. And a little bit of a deeper cutout here that you can use against the index finger, although uh, you catch a little bit of that corner. And I don't really care for that. So action on this one, this boker. I'm going to back out a little bit. Why shouldn't I, right? <clears throat> this action, really nice. This handle, a little bit heavier. Then we have the Bradley Ballet Song. And what model is this? It's the 901. A little different yet. Um, this guy, hard to tell, could be on washers rather than bearings. You may know. If you know, jump in and make a comment. No problem. This one has grooved G10 which I find a little rough, a little harsh. And the only thing that they've skeletonized on this is the G10, so the handles are more solid. You know, each one's got its virtues. Each one's fun to move around. That's a double flip. I mean, <clears throat> it's as easy as going like that to be able to open the knife, that to close the knife, that to open the knife. That's called a single flip. So if that's all you want to do, and have a sturdy knife that is the blade cannot fold on your finger so long as you're holding on to the handle. Keep that in mind. You've also got different methods of using stops. Here you've got double pins. Here you have this extended tang that hits these posts or stop pins there and then also there. That's why you got the little groove right there for the pin. I tend to like that version a little better. The originals had a single pin and it was right there. Did not have a pin there. And basically the blade rested 
inside the handles on the choil area, which was extended on the original, I should say original, the ballet song, the Benchmade ballet songs. So again, you've got a knife that will not, cannot close. It's anchored in three positions. Now we get to the very popular Kershaw Lucha. This knife is in 14C28N. By the way, what was the Bradley? I think the Bradley's 154CM, which makes it a little pricier. We're talking about 80 to 90 for the Bokers, and we're talking uh, maybe about 115 or 20 for the Bradley. And we're talking about, I think, current price around 115 to 110 maybe for the, they've come down a bit, for the Lucha. Lucha's definitely a bigger blade. We've got a four, about a four and a half inch blade on the Lucha. On this um, boker here, we've got about a four inch blade, depends upon where you measure it. So you can see from the handle. Do I need to back out even more? Maybe. So you can see there from the handle, they're going to have to hold them sideways. These are, generally speaking, larger knives, Valley Songs. There you go. So you can see the Lucha is a longer blade. Now, um, of all the knives that I have here, I'd say the Lucha is sort of in the middle in terms of uh, handling. It's longer, the handles are longer, so you've got more uh, circumference that they're spinning on. They are skeletonized, so that makes them lighter. They are a steel handle. You can get flitanium, titanium handles for them. Kind of pricey though. A little over 100 for those, almost the price of the knife. Um, the latch, can lock the handles together so should you put it down it doesn't come apart and you can pick it up and have a whole intact knife and of course the latches hold the handles together so without a pocket clip these are generally put into the pocket next to the wallet where they can be dropped down inside the front pocket what Benchmade used to produce was what's called a cocoon which was a ballistic nylon sheath that you wore horizontally that had a Velcro flap. We practiced our fast draws with that and you could get that knife out in a real hurry and pop the latch off as you're taking it out. Here's an interesting lucha. Got holes in the blade. <laughs> yeah, that's a trainer. So you want to learn without cutting yourself Many of these companies, including the Boker and probably the Bradley, do make trainers. And a um, great way to learn. I don't have a trainer for the Bokers, and right now they're my most uh, favorite uh, knives to manipulate, to practice with. As my Filipino martial arts instructor said, the whole point of it is you open the knife and it's a knife. You open the ballet song, you flip it open, it's a knife. So you can learn lots of manipulations with this and use it as a fidget toy. You can throw it into the air and spin it around and flip it and flick it with your fingers. But while that knife is not in good contact with your hand, you have to be careful that somebody doesn't knock it out of your hand if they're good in the Filipino martial arts or any other martial arts, usually a stick across the back of the hand, will uh, <coughs> cause you to drop that knife. So you have to manipulate to open it quickly and get a grip. Quickly and get a grip. But you know it's really not that much different than opening a flipper knife because there's always going to be points where you're compromised. You're not going to have a full grip, full solid grip on that knife. 
I would say probably an out the front auto is the best knife to have a completely full grip on most of the time because you're just going to rock your thumb back and forth to open that blade. So again, um, the Lucha from Kershaw, both in its live version, Sandvik Steel, and its trainer version, the Bradley, I believe this is the Bradley Kimura, full name, 154 cm. The Bokers are in D2, which is interesting because you're touching the blade a lot, manipulating it. You just want to make sure you maybe wipe it down with a silicone cloth when you're done. Both of those have G10 handles. Again, my favorite for manipulating, and it's got the plus of a pocket clip, is the Boker G10 Ballysong Large. One other thing before I go, uh, most of these companies have figured out a way to keep the latch from peening the point of the blade. See? There's a stop there. That wasn't the case on the original Bally songs from Benchmade. You would see that that uh, latch would get pretty banged up hitting the tip. Um, unless you've got it constantly in flight, beginners would beat that clip up or that uh, latch up quite a bit. But all of these, as far as I can see, have some form of of limitation on the latch and slightly different latches different shapes they all do the same thing a little bit of tension and you're there well so that's it for Bally Song basics and five different models of Bally Song in the event you are interested in picking one up um, I wouldn't overlook them. I think every serious knife collector should have at least one Bally Song in their collection. And you can go crazy, you know, three, four, five hundred dollar, thousand dollar Bally Songs, and they're not always with uh, rich materials either. A lot of them simply um, are well made, interesting, and uh, are kind of tuned to people that like to do those uh, throw it up in the air, spin it behind the back, aerial acrobatic kind of stuff. As I say, um, I sort of limit myself to the combat application of the ballet song, switching it from hand to hand, from time to time, trying different flips and so on and so forth, but seldom, if ever, does it go up in the air and leave my hand. Could be that I'm just not that talented. It could be that uh, I don't see a personal need for it. So, uh, and uh, I have fewer cuts to show for it <laughs> that way as well. Hope you all enjoyed this video, a little offbeat from my usual stuff, but um, again, I hope you appreciate it and enjoy it. And um, I will be back with you soon. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe.